And over the course of 13 years, only one woman was not sexually abused as a little girl or raped as a young woman. For most of these women, home is a very scary place, a place that they have fled. The shelters are ironically the first places many of them find safety, protection, or comfort. This is a woman's story as she told it. What isn't in the story is the fact that this woman met another woman in a shelter, and they fell in love, and through their love, they both got out of the shelter system. Now, here's her story. Memory. December 1965, five years old. My mom tells me in a scary, loud, bright, life threatening voice to stop scratching my coochie snorcher. I become terrified that I scratch it off down there. I do not touch it. I put band aids over my coochie to cover the hole. I imagine that it's like a bath plug up there to prevent things from entering me when I'm in the bath. I sleep with three pairs of happy hearted pattern cotton underpants underneath my sap up pajamas. I still want to touch myself, but I don't. Memory, seven years old. Edgar Montaigne, who is 10, gets angry at me and punches me with all his might between my legs. I feel like he breaks my entire self. I limp home. My mama asks me what's wrong with my coochie snorcher, and when I tell her what Edgar did to me, she yells at me and says, never let anyone touch me again down there. I try to explain to mama he punched me. Memory, nine years old. I play on the bed, bouncing and playing and falling, and impale my coochie snorcher on the bed post. I make high-pitched screaming noises that come straight from my coochie snorcher's mouth. I get taken to the hospital and they throw it up down there. It's torn apart. Memory, 10 years old. I'm at my father's house and he's having a party upstairs. Everyone's drinking and I'm playing in the basement, trying on my new cotton white panties and bra that my father's girlfriend gave me. And suddenly my father's best friend, a big man named Alfred, comes in from behind, pulls my new underpants down and sticks his big hard penis into my coochie torture. I scream, I kick, I try to fight him off, but he already gets in. My father is there, and then there's a gunshot, loud noise, and blood, lots of blood. I'm sure my coochie search is finally falling out. Alfred's paralyzed, and I never see my dad for seven years. Memory, 13 years old. My coochie snorcher is a very bad place. A place of pain, nastiness, punching, invasion, and blood. It's such a mishap. I imagine a freeway between my legs and I'm traveling, going far away from here. Memory, 16. There's this gorgeous 24-year-old woman in our neighborhood and I stare at her all the time. One day she invites me into her car. She asks me if I like to kiss boys, and I tell her I do not like them. Then she says she wants to show me something, and she leans over and kisses me softly with her lips, and then puts her tongue in my mouth. She asks me if I want to come over to her house, and then she kisses me again and tells me to relax, to feel it, to let our tongues feel it. My mama, I asked if I could spend the night, my mom was delighted that such a beautiful, successful woman has taken an interest in me. I'm scared, I can't wait. Her apartment's fantastic, it is hooked up. It's the 70s, the bees, the fluffy pillows, the mood lights. I decide right there, I want to be a secretary like her when I grow up. She makes me a vodka, she makes a vodka for herself, and then she asks me what I want to drink. I say the same as she's drinking, and she says she doesn't think my mom would like me drinking that. I say she probably wouldn't like me kissing girls either. The pretty lady changes into a chocolate satin teddy. She's so beautiful. I always thought bull daggers was ugly. I say, you look great, and she says, so do you. But I only had these white cotton bra and underpants, I say. Then she dresses me slowly. 
in another satin tatty. It's lavender. It's like the first soft days of spring. I notice above her bed, there's a huge picture of a beautiful black woman in an afro. She gently, slowly lays me down out in the bed, and just our bodies rubbing makes me come. Then she does everything to me and my coochie snorcher. Then she tells me, your vagina, untouched by man, smells so nice, so fresh. Wish I should keep it that way forever. I get crazy wild, and then the phone rings. And of course, it's my mama. I'm sure she knows. She catches me at everything. I'm breathing so heavy, I try to act normal. And when my mama ain't going out of breath, I tell her I was just exercising. My mama says, make sure that there's no boys around here. And the beautiful lady says, trust me, there's no boys here. The gorgeous lady teaches me everything about my coochie torture. She makes me play with myself in front of her. She teaches me all the different ways to give myself pleasure. She's very thorough. She tells me I need to know how to give myself pleasure so I'll never need to rely on no man. In the morning, I'm worried that I've become butch because I'm so in love with her. She just laughs, but I never see her again. I realized later she was my surprising, unexpected, politically incorrect salvation. She transformed my sorry ass pretty snorcher and raised it to a kind of heaven. <laughs>